Hello everybody. Uh, this video is uh, an overview of Newton's three laws, probably better as a review than as an in, in introduction to any of these, but um, you know, a good thing to, to kind of put things into perspective and remember the concepts. Newton's first law, um, I, I know you've talked about multiple times before, um, and the, the typical phrasing is that an object at rest tends to remain at rest, an object in motion tends to remain in motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Uh, I think even this description is a little bit lacking. The in motion, probably we should uh, insert there in motion at a constant speed and in a constant direction unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So objects have constant velocity um, unless they're acted on by an unbalanced force. And actually, I think that's probably an easier phrasing to work with in terms of understanding our problems and, and uh, working problems. So I would advocate um, instead using this phrasing for Newton's first law. All objects move with a constant velocity unless they're acted on by unbalanced forces. That velocity could be zero, that'd be this object at rest has a velocity of zero, and it's going to have a constant velocity of zero, it stays at rest. It could be an object that's moving though with some speed and direction, that speed and direction stay constant until that object is acted on by those unbalanced forces here. Newton's second law. Uh, the first law says, hey, if we have no outside forces, no unbalanced forces, then we have constant velocity. The second law then is the case where we do have unbalanced forces. And uh, in this law, we, we usually just use the equation to describe this. Um, so the equation is that the acceleration, that's a vector, the acceleration vector of an object is equal to the total force or the net force, that's a vector as well, acting on an object divided by that object's mass. Um, this uh, can be further broken up into the x and y directions if we, uh, if we have a coordinate system like that in our problem. So we could say the, to the overall um, the resultant acceleration in the x direction um, is equal to the total force in the x direction divided by the mass of the object. And we can do the same thing in the y direction. Uh, just a side note here that the second law equation, if we have a total force of zero, a net force of zero, that's equivalent to saying that we have forces that are balanced or we have no forces at all. So we could say when this condition is true, when the net force is zero, that means we have no unbalanced forces acting on the object. And if this is zero, then this one is going to be zero as well. The acceleration will be zero when the net force is zero. So if we have no unbalanced forces acting on an object, then it has zero acceleration, which means it has constant velocity. That's Newton's first law, objects with no unbalanced forces travel with constant velocity or don't accelerate. So Newton's first law is actually rolled right into Newton's second law. Newton's third law, something we're all familiar with and many, many of us have uh, uh, a misconception about this. For every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. And I see really two big misconceptions with this. Thinking of Newton's third law as being a cause and effect sort of thing, which it's not. Or uh, a lot of people think of this as being anytime we have two forces that are equal in size and opposite in direction, that those two make up an action and reaction pair, or a Newton's third law pair. And that just isn't the case. Uh, so. You know, I, I see people give examples like when I kick a soccer ball, the soccer ball moves forward. I kick it, that's the action, the soccer ball moves forward, that's the reaction. You're really talking about cause and effect there, which, I mean, you're not wrong when you kick it, that causes it to move forward, but that's not what Newton's third law is talking about. The other misconception is just saying that I have, if I have two forces on some object, and they're equal in size and opposite in direction, that those two have to be Newton's third law pairs. Or if I have two forces on an object and they're in opposite directions, then those two must be the same size. They must be equal in magnitude. And that's just wrong as well. And I think the phrasing is to blame here. It's really vague. So I'd recommend working with this more specific phrasing for Newton's third law. A force we defined um, in, in class as an interaction between two objects. 
So when two objects interact, each of those objects experiences a force. Those two forces then, they happen at the same time, they're the same size or the same magnitude, and they happen in opposite directions. So right now you're being pulled downward by gravity, by Earth's gravity. And I think the with the previous definition, even if you understand we're talking about forces, the inclination would be to say, well, I'm getting a downward force from gravity, I'm getting an upward force from my chair or the floor. Those two must be a Newton's third law pair. But that isn't the case. Instead, with this definition, what we would say is we have two objects interacting, me and the Earth. And the Earth is pulling me down. That's a gravitational force between me and the Earth. I'm being pulled downward by it. The reaction, or the Newton's third law pair force to that, would be the force that I'm exerting upward on the Earth through gravity. It's still a gravitational attraction. I get a force downward from it, the Earth gets a force upward from it. And those two forces are equal in size, they happen simultaneously, and they're opposite in direction. Now, if I'm pulled down just as hard as the Earth is being pulled up by me, how come the Earth doesn't move when I do something like jump? Or if I step up on a chair and then fall down, I fall down to the Earth. The Earth doesn't rise up to meet me. Well, actually, it kind of does. But if we go back to the second law, we see that even though the forces on each of us, on me and on the Earth, would be equal, the masses are really, really, really not equal. And so the accelerations are going to be really different as well. I accelerate downward a lot. The Earth accelerates upward toward me, but such a tiny, tiny, tiny amount that we couldn't measure it. We don't notice it. We couldn't even measure it. We could calculate the effect, and we understand why it's such a small effect when we calculate it. Um, I've done a calculation with this and found that if I were to stand up on the chair and f just let myself fall downward, that in that time that I was accelerating downward and the Earth was accelerating upward, I fall down by about a half a meter, and the Earth falls up to meet me and moves about a tenth of an angstrom. An angstrom is about the size of a hydrogen atom. So the entire Earth shifts over one-tenth of the size of a hydrogen atom to come and meet me. It doesn't move nearly as much as I do, but it does move as I move. Now we notice this a little bit more with objects that are closer in size, so uh, say the Earth and the Moon, we can actually detect. Um, we can't feel this, but we uh, have measurement tools that can detect that the Earth doesn't sit still with the Moon revolving around it. Instead, the Earth wobbles a little bit. The Earth and the Moon are orbiting some point between the two uh, objects. Now, that point is much, much closer to the Earth. In fact, it's within, within the Earth's surface than it is to the Moon. But it's not the Earth sitting still with no gravitational force pulling it around and the Moon orbiting because of gravitational force. They both get the same amount of gravity. That's, as I said, just an overview of Newton's third law. There's lots, or uh, Newton's three laws. There are lots of different ways to apply these and lots of different um, uh, things to think about with these. But hopefully uh, you can kind of get a sense for the big picture by taking a minute to step back and look at, uh, at these three laws and, and kind of how they fit together. Thanks for watching, folks. If you learned something, please go ahead and click like. If you'd like to learn more from these videos, go ahead and subscribe. And please, by all means, leave me comments and questions in the comments section below.